Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's hard to believe it. It's Friday the 15th of May. Alan Ruff, Tom McManus and Barry Ferguson are here with me. I don't know about you, Ruffy, but one day just seems to roll into the other so quickly. It's incredible. Uh, it's great for us, uh, breaking news every day, uh, some a lot more serious than others. So we're waiting to see what statements fire out in the next hour and see if it can cheer us up or put us in a downer for the weekend. <laughs> Well, on that basis, <laughs> you're, you're, you're such a noise up, you really are, because obviously what he's alluding to, Tom, is the SPFL are clearly having a meeting today, and uh, the big discussion is calling the league and confirming relegation. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll obviously find out about that later on today, um, hopefully maybe even on the show live, that'd be good, but uh, it looks as if they're going to call it Celtic champions and, and hearts relegated, and, and that'll be it, and I think that's... You know, it's been a long time coming. I think we should have done it a wee while ago. I don't think there's been any prospect of any football getting played whatsoever. So I think it's the right decision to make and we can look towards, you know, next season and trying to get, you know, I've seen Murdo McLennan talking about maybe July. They want the game started uh, in terms of next season so we can look towards getting hubs or some sort of closed door games to get football back in Scotland. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. But uh, of course, Barry, uh, you know, you're with us for the moment. If this SPFL does get called <laughs> within the show, you'll take the flip flops off and just batter your Wi Fi till you can't get, till you can't be seen on the telly. <laughs> yep, Peter, you know me very well. Um, so, so hopefully the, the news doesn't break uh, during the show. But listen, all seriousness, look, if it's called, it's going to be a better for everybody connected with Rangers to swallow but listen it's one of the ones Peter you need to go on with and accept it I say as a way at the start there was going to be things that you'd be happy with and things that you wouldn't be and obviously this is one that obviously the, the Rangers um, side that won't be happy with but we need to just move on to next season Peter whenever that starts and, and try and, and um, better what they did this season certainly the first six months was very good but the last couple of months leading into this virus was uh, very poor. So they need to sort that, that side of it out and hopefully bring some silverware back to Ibrox. Yep, OK. Um, a big hi to Bobby McDonald who's joined us. Craig Paxson, Dougie Little as ever. Uh, Dougie's been a regular uh, following the programme. Craig Barber, John Dutton, uh, Newell Jones, Pat Gillen, Tam Callan, uh, and uh, lots of people. Andy Chalmers, Barry McNabb, and uh, Mayor Mark Simpson, um, who just says, Ruffy is a legend. So there you are. There's people that absolutely uh, love Ruffy and love the fact that uh, every now and then, along with Barry, he moves his mic consistently and it sounds as if he's belting it off his knee. So it's always good to hear that. Um, we'll talk about the jam as well. Look at him looking down. I'm nervous, Peter. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, I know, I know you're nervous, Mary. I can tell right away. Um, uh, hi to Ben Connor, Eddie Snedden, uh, James Marshall. There are so many people joining us on uh, Facebook that we like to give a mention to. And of course, uh, let's not forget also because it's live on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And when you do that, uh, you'll get all the latest notifications and you can join us Monday to Friday as well. Joseph Byrne, uh, Gary McKean is on there. Tommy Adams is in Thailand, no less. Thailand. Um, uh, hopefully you're safe and well out there. Uh, Raymond Doherty as well on YouTube. Thank you very much to the thousands of people who are joining us. The figures are absolutely incredible uh, watching the show and we really are pleased, Ruffy, that more and more people uh, are joining the football family. Well, but not that pleased because <laughs> Ruffy's clearly decided to opt out. Uh, only timing on this. that You can tell it's a live show, can't you? Uh, and with that, let's see if we can get Ruffy back after we give you the quiz question. straightforward stuff should be an easy one for you to guess the year on that one uh, the good news is there, is there. Uh, there he is there you are Ruffy yeah, yeah. I know that I know that number off by heart now 
Yeah, absolutely. It's good to have yeah, you back. Yeah, but Pierre, we, we got we got a close up view of uh, Ruffy's curtains there. It was a, it was magnificent. Yeah. I have to tell you guys. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Clippers have arrived. Uh, they came in this morning. Uh, I've opened the box, and Tam, uh, this evening I will be letting my wife loose on the heat. Simple as that. You going to get a zero? Oh. Uh, <laughs> steady, Tom. If I, if, I get, if, I, if I get a zero, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look as, as as Tom Burns used to say to me, I'll definitely look like Benny from Top Cat if I get a zero. So, so there's no chance of that. And with Tom in mind, it is, uh, of course, time to... Uh, over the course of the programme, reflect at some point on uh, Tommy Burns, who sadly passed away today. It was a day after, Barry, um, that you uh, and the boys were heading back up the road after uh, the UEFA Cup final in 2008, sadly. Yeah, it was sad news, Peter. Um, obviously, the management team at that time um, were with Tommy in the Scotland set-up, and I had the privilege of Tommy coaching me um, at Scotland. Fantastic guy, he had... A lot of time from his banter was unbelievable between the Celtic and the Rangers side. Um, but most of all, Peter, he just wasn't a, a top coach. He was a top guy. Um, really fond of him. And I, I couldn't say a bad word about him. Top guy. Yeah, uh, the football show remembers uh, the late, great Tommy Burns. On this day 12 years ago, Celtic icon Tommy Burns died aged 51. Burns grew up a Celtic fan and considered himself to be no more than a supporter who got lucky. He spent 14 years at Parkhead as a player, winning six league titles, five Scottish Cups and one League Cup in 503 appearances. He then spent five seasons at Kilmarnock, in the latter years managing them to promotion into the top flight. He then returned to Celtic in 1994 as manager and won the Scottish Cup in 95, Celtic's first trophy in six years. But despite attractive football, a league title eluded his team. Today, Celtic wrote that Tommy Burns embodied everything that is good about Celtic and he will never be forgotten. Yeah, Tom Burns, his, for me, Ruffy, uh, as a friend, um, you know, had many great uh, days that I can recall his patter. It was absolutely brilliant and wicked. Uh, uh, playing football with him non-stop, it was almost as if he was like one of those guys that would chap my door and say, can you come out and play football? And the amount of times we played in games and got all our mates down to Barrafield was incredible. But his patter was, patter was sensational. Yeah, it was super. Uh, you know, you never know when it was going to happen, but it did uh, on numerous occasions. And I always tell my, my favourite Tommy Burns story. Uh, you probably heard it and a lot of people have heard it again, but I, I still remember it to this day. When I signed for Celtic and I turned up my first day at half past nine in the morning at the front door, Tommy was standing there waiting to welcome me to the club, took me into the dressing room. We went along to Barrafield to train. Uh, after the, the, the training session, we had a wee eight aside, and it was a uh, normal format that Tommy and Mick McCarthy, they picked the two sides. Uh, Tommy's team generally won all the time, but uh, for some reason, the first pick, uh, it was uh, being back at school, you got to pick a one or two or whatever, and, and Tommy's first pick was me. And it made me feel so welcome to be at the club, to be in Tommy's side. It was also great, you know, when the fight kicked off during the, during the actual game that I was in Tommy's side as well because it was a it was a scrap and a half between him and Mick McCarthy. And uh, and afterwards afterwards when we came back to Bar back from Barrafield into into Parkhead to get trained, uh, he, he says to me, Where are you going? And I said, I'm gonna get a shirt like everybody else. He said, No, no, he says the, the signings, the new signings always come for a wee run with me, you know, uh, before you have the shower. And I said, fair enough. I says, where are we going? He says, oh, we'll just run around uh, a mile or so. So we ran around all the streets and in and out and these streets. And all of a sudden, we were standing outside the chapel. And he says, I'll only be half an hour. Just hang on till I come out. <laughs> he bounced into the chapel and left me standing outside. And I had to wait until he came out to go back to the park. Yeah, that was the kind of you know, things he used to do. He was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I don't know if you have Did you have any uh, meetings with him at all? Did you encounter him, Tom? Um, a couple of times um, when I was at Hibs, we were playing against Celtic. I bumped into Tommy Burns, and you know it's, it's amazing in football that nobody's got a, a bad word to say about him. And you know, Ali McCoy and Walter Smith helped carry his coffin. 
And I think that's a you know a lasting an image in my mind that you know the respect that the people for Rangers had for Tommy Burns as well. When it crossed the divide with Celtic and Rangers, uh, you get a lot of guys like that who are proper legends at their club and they're respected by the other side. And Tommy Burns was certainly one of them. And uh, you know Alan McCoy's crying his eyes out uh, when he was carrying Tommy's coffin is, is something that I'll never forget. And I think it shows you the esteem that Tommy was held in by everyone at Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. I think he transcended the old firm divide is the best way to sum it up. Um, I, I, another thing that sticks in my mind, Ruffy, on this, and, and I think it's very difficult because he was so well liked and loved by everybody. Uh, I mean, he used to, by the way, I have to tell you, he used to be two, three hours late for a press conference and he'd never think twice about it. He'd walk in as if he'd been two minutes late and he'd laugh his head off at you. But um he he, uh, he he was uh, as well as being so well loved. I, my heart goes out to the family at this point because apart from anything else, everybody remembers him on this day, and 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 I wonder if it. I wonder how the family view it, uh, Ruffy, because you know Rosemary uh, and I know Jonathan as well. They will just they will just have great memories of their dad, but it, it must be sad just on a, a yearly basis, just looking mm -hmm. back when everybody joins in the tributes to him. I, I don't know how they view it. Yeah. Well, there, there was rumours a way back, you know, that uh, I don't know what it was. I don't know why I'm bringing it up. That Rosemary had sort of a fell out with the club for some reason. I don't know what it was, but it was fantastic that they made up uh, and Rosemary came and I think she unfurled one of the, the flags, one of the league flags in one of the, the seasons, which I think brought everybody back together game and that's the way it should have been. Uh, because the whole the whole family was, was so steeped in Celtic and as we know Tommy was a very religious guy, you know, the chapel every day. Uh, after training every day he went to chapel. Uh, and and that's the way he was, you know, if we went away abroad, you know, the first place him and we Doc Fitzsimmons looked for was the first chapel. Uh, the nearest chapel, wherever we were, you know, and everybody had to go. It was a given, you know, you never argued, you just went along. Uh, and that's what he was, you know, he, he was steeped in Celtic and steeped in his own religion. Uh, and that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he sent me a message, uh, I think possibly the... The week that he died, uh, and uh, I've never, I've never thrown the phone out. I just keep it just for that sole reason, nothing else. Just keep that phone, and I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. Um, Barry, I think from your point of view, you must be in a very special position because the laughs and the banter at the Scotland setup must have been, uh, I mean, amazing. Because Coisty never stops talking about it. Everything was a wind up, wasn't it? Yeah, obviously, some of the stuff I couldn't actually say in the show, but the, the banter that went on between Coisty and Tommy Burns, and as Ruffy says, he, he never missed a, um, a day going to chapel, and he, he certainly reminded me he was going to chapel every single day when he was in the Scotland squad um, after lunch. Uh, but see, on the training field, Peter, he actually joined in at times as well. He, he, what a left peg he had um, in some of his training things he'd done. Um, and he was certainly a help to me as well. He was always one that I could go and speak to if um, I thought I could do something better. And he would always give me guidance. So, I mean, the Rangers and Celtic divide, everybody talks about, but he was always there to help me. If I had any questions, he was always there to answer them. Um, so I held him in high, high regard, Peter. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and uh, I know he had a great pal, Matt, and we used to meet in Matt's clothes shop and we'd sit in the back with a cup of tea uh, and, you know, try and solve the problems of the world. And uh, he told me a great story, which you will like, Barry Ferguson. Um, he said that, um, obviously, when uh, Walter got the call for Rangers to go back as manager, uh, and <laughs> he know. says, and, and, Koisty, and Koisty was going with him and he's, and he's sitting there with a cup of tea with me and Matt in this clothes shop. He says, and I just phoned up Walter and says, listen, I know we're a team. I know the three of us all stick together. I'm just waiting on the call. When's it coming? You know, when, <laughs> when, when, will, when will I get my gear together? <laughs> and uh, that, would have been, uh, laughter. <laughs> that would have been unbelievable. Eh? Tommy Burns going to Rangers as a coach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> There's more chance of uh, Ruffy watching a serious documentary. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, <laughs> Ruffy's here, Tab McManus and Barry Ferguson. Lots of people joining us. Gary Smith, uh, Will Turner uh, and Brian Murphy as well. Lots of people uh, who have posted some really nice messages about Tommy Burns. Hugh Duff, uh, Curtis Peachy, lots of people joining us on Facebook. Darren Fields as well. Um, 
who just says, sorry, I'm late. It's as simple as that. People don't want to miss it. People want to join in, like, share, and follow mm. on Facebook and subscribe on our YouTube channel. So thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, just on that point, Ruffy, now from uh, Tommy Burns, I, I want to draw your attention to the joint response group. They got together, SPFL, SFA. They're looking at ways that they can move forward when eventually we get to a new season. Certainly won't have any fans, Ruffy, but they're talking about a hub of grounds that will be used, potentially with the broadcasters permanently in these hubs, uh, and a virtual season ticket, where basically, if you want to buy the season ticket, you get the exclusive chance to watch <laughs> games that you wouldn't normally watch live, so you are the virtual fan. Yeah, just explain to me, Peter, how that works. Obviously, filming it... Uh... Does that involve Sky and their package? Uh, uh, is that out with it? You know, is that just well, the, the, your own your own club? Because I know all the clubs have TV cameras and they they do video everything. I was just wondering if that was a tie-in with Sky, or is that out with it? You know, I don't know if there's any complications there. Yeah, I don't know the breakdown of it, but if you bear in mind that the only two broadcasters left in the equation now, for the next six years it will be Sky as a satellite broadcaster, and then you've got the BBC. Uh, so I would imagine uh, that, apart from anything else, you'll be able to buy a season ticket uh, which would allow you to watch the games uh, at the time they kick off, 3 o'clock on a Saturday. I don't think that will be an issue. You can watch it because you obviously can't go to the game. Um as far as Sky's live games as well, I would imagine that will be a separate package. I don't know how they're going to carve it up, but one thing, interestingly, and it's not in this um, you know, release yesterday, Barry, and I wonder if they might embrace this, uh, and I, I, mean, I don't think I'm saying anything out of turn here, but I remember, and Ruffy, you'll remember this, I remember going over to Steve Archibald over in Spain, and it's something that's been pioneered and actually works now. I remember they actually went over and you had a virtual headset. And the virtual headset basically allowed you to go to a concert that you couldn't you would maybe have gone to. And this virtual headset is basically taking you in there as a fan to the game. So you had you had that feeling of being in the ground. I know Tam's laughing, but this actually was this has been pioneered across the world. There are actually virtual headsets you can get, and basically what it is is the actual film from the concert <clears throat> or the sporting event. And you know, let's just say it's for example Billy Joel in Madison Square Garden, and not everybody can get to New York, so they buy a ticket for it. They get the virtual headset, and they are actually in a seat at that uh, ground. I wonder if they might embrace something like that. I, I'm curious to see how they're going to, uh, to do this and get get the feeling of razzmatazz with no sound in the ground. I've used the headset, uh, headset, sorry, but in the pictures. So I don't know I don't know how it works. Listen, it's a great idea. I'm sure some of the fans would be right up for it. Um, and listen, when it comes on to the, the stations, I'm sure every single fan, whether they've, they've, um, they've paid for a season ticket or not, Peter, I'm sure every single fan would pay to watch their, their team playing a Saturday again. Guys, uh, girls, women, whatever, are just desperate for football to get back. So whatever way they get it back, I'm sure everybody would buy into it. I can't wait to hear what Tam's got to say because he's been smiling like a little <laughs> Cheshire cat when I suggested it as if I was some kind of man from outer space. Go on, Tam, what's your concern? No, no, no. It was, was Ruffy Ruffy put on the WhatsApp chat that he had one of those virtual headsets, but it wasn't for that. It was for it was for it was for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, you were, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to lower the tone. Ruff, Ruff, the Ruffy's floor. got one. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know the actual, I think you can get them, you obviously get them for gaming, Tam. But, uh, I, I mean, I genuinely have, um, do you remember, Ruffy, the conversation we had with Steve Archibald yeah. in Spain? Yeah, I certainly do. Uh, I remember him talking about it. I can't remember what venue he was talking about or where it was, but it was certainly that uh, I don't know if it was him, but I think it was a I think it was a friend of his was coming up with the concept and they were working on it and trying to get finance to push it a lot further. I don't know where it went. The, the, the thing we have got see what you're saying, ground hubs. Are we talking yeah. about are we talking about stadiums that aren't are, are 
you know, not maybe accessible to that's going to cause any trouble with the infection or anything like that. Because I'm trying to think, we don't have that many clubs. I know they have them in the continent where they're away out in the middle of nowhere. That we we don't have that many clubs. So obviously, Hamden is an ideal one. I mean, you can play three or four games yeah. in Hamden in a day. But I'm I'm trying to think who the other ones would be. Well, I think it's I think it's any kind of stadia which, uh, to be honest with you, Barry has the best of facilities. It's a Hamden, it's an Ibrox, it's a Celtic Park, uh, and you know mm-hmm. I, I don't know what ones of the others. It could be a Tynecastle or, or, or an Easter Road. But the point I think here is, whatever grounds they use, whoever is allowed in, mm-hmm. there has to be strict guidelines of two metre distancing of enough medical facilities I presume they'll be doing the same as the Germans which is disinfecting all areas on a regular basis Mm -hmm. throughout the game, there must be some sort of testing, so if they pick four or five grounds and then those grounds are equipped with all the latest broadcasting equipment and then all the latest medical Mm -hmm. teams basically go to those grounds and then you play a raft of games there over a weekend Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peter, I, I'm definitely up for that. I'm like everybody, I just want football to get back playing again. And listen, if it comes down to four stadiums, five stadiums that have got all the facilities, bring it on. We just, every single person just wants to see football back on a Saturday. And if it means just using, as you mentioned, four or five stadiums, bring it on. Let's do it. Yeah, the it's other a, thing is a, rather worrying here. Yeah. Peter, I've not been disrespectful or anything like that, but see most of the clubs in the first and sixth, first and second division, they could do social distancing with the crowds that they get. You know, most of these stadiums are built for maybe two or three thousand, and the average I would say is maybe seven hundred, eight hundred. So doing social distancing round the stadium, most of the stadiums, there are clubs who only get three or four hundred at a game. Surely that would be easy to do social distancing as well. Well, right now, I think it's fair to say that the discussions that are going on are going on with obviously liaising with the government uh, and discussing what requirements would need to be put in place. So I'm, I'm almost certain they would do that. Uh, certainly for the lower leagues, Rafi, I think you make a valid point on this. Uh, they would look and say to themselves, OK, if there, if there are lower league games, here is... Uh, here are the set of rules that you need to abide by um, before anybody gets in. Um, the only problem I have with it is basically it would be a staggered, uh, you know, a queue of people trying to get into the ground, and they would have scheduled seats, uh, uh, dedicated seats that they would have to uh, stick to. And if they go out. To, would they have to wear masks? I don't know. At the lower leagues, I don't know. Um, that's on the basis of crowds going to the games. The, the discussions they're having now, Ruffy, are about crowds not going to games. It's about how do you sell people a virtual season ticket and they stay in their house. Um, so I think that's the point here. It's not the point of anybody going to games, although I think you make a valid point. That, you know, Lots of fans could go to lower league games if there was social distancing um, and there wasn't a, a huge amount of people, but that's still to be debated, uh, to be honest with you. And quite a number of people are saying, wouldn't it be great if PLZ Soccer could maybe act as one of the pilot schemes and we get uh, virtual headsets on to see, uh, you know, inside your house, um, which would be very interesting indeed. Um, <laughs> I'd, right, into, I'd like to see inside Barry's. <laughs> no, well, I was just about to say, Tom, I'd love to see Barry's, it. Barry's mansion. <laughs> yep, inside the yep. inside the Rangers man cave, all those Rangers strips, yep. Rangers away strips. Anybody who's played for Rangers, it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, Baz? We've got a virtual tour. Uh, I'm going to be sitting at the night, Peter. If this news comes out, so um, yeah. that's what I'm planning. Yeah, absolutely. Barry just in the Rangers man cave, Tam. If Celtic are declared champions yep. tonight, it's just not going to be. It's not going to be a great night for him, to be honest with you, Ruffy, Is it? No, no, but I think he's treating it uh, pretty good. Uh, I think he's uh, he realises that uh, <laughs> the, for nine in a row it's equal. And uh, I, I said to you before the show started, I think there'd be a horrible, horrible case if it was ten in a row we're deciding if that if that comes around, you know, that that be much, much bigger than what we're waiting to get announced here uh, today. Uh, so I think we should be grateful for that and small mercies that uh, it is to equal it and not to to, to be the ten. 
Uh, hi to uh, Gary Smith, uh, also uh, Kenny O'Donnell. Uh, and he, Kenny O'Donnell says, would Sky and BT not have a say on any TV deals? Um, well, it's not a bad point. It was probably Sky, to be perfectly honest with you, because uh, BT's uh, involvement in Scottish football, as far as the Premiership is concerned, is over. Sky have the next six years. Um, and uh, I think we've got one here from Matthew Longard, who says, Ruffy up close on VR. Um, obviously not something uh, they'd like to see. I was delighted that Ruffy actually remembered the meeting I had with uh, Stevie Archibald because Ruffy had scoop, scooped about three bottles of wine and he was absolutely bladdered <laughs> on that night out. Uh, to be careful on this with you. Um, hi to David McDivitt, George Bruce, as well as Stuart Grant, Andy Clark, uh, lots of people, Alan Anderson, uh, and Alan Anderson says, yeah, get into them, Barry, give them what's for. Uh, so... Uh, and William Innes says it's not really about seeing Barry. It's not about seeing Barry's uh, man cave. It's about seeing his missus. <laughs> so, so, so there you are. There's, there's somebody just straight to the point with that. And um, and Sean Patrick McNamara says inside Ruffy's gaff, it's much the same as the Playboy Mansion. So not too yeah, far away from the, the truth on that one. If there was any action in the house, could, could you charge extra for that? That's that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm wondering what you mean by oh, he's, off, he's off his head, he's off no, his I'm head, honestly. About, uh, it's about it's close to the games, weekend, no Peter. Games, getting, you know. Yeah, fighting, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other thing I was going to say to you guys, um, I, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take for that to get off the ground, but I certainly am like you, Barry, and, and Tam and Ruffy. Just be great to get football back, Tam. Um, there's a fair little battle going on. I noticed we had Gary Mackay on. He wasn't too complimentary towards uh, Craig Levine. He's certainly been speaking, I think, in the Edinburgh papers, just basically saying good riddance. Um, you know, Craig Levine and Austin McPhee set to go. I think I think maybe uh, a little unkind uh, towards Austin McPhee for anyone who thinks good riddance there. I think when people actually look back over the madness of Hearts over the last two seasons... I think Ann Budge will have a lot of regrets, do you? Yeah, absolutely. Peter, I think play off the park. Uh, sorry, on with Craig Levine had them long before that. Um, feel long in doing that press. So it's led to this. And then you've got Daniel Stendhal, who there's rumours that he's going to, I think, appointment for Hart. Just one. Um, just one of those uh, days, no Ruffy, when uh, more, more of a, no, yeah. Tam, has, Tam yeah, hasn't paid his, <laughs> his, his no pay. Wi-Fi. It yeah, sounds crazy. We, we need to get Tam actually, back. It's actually a lot better, him using that ventriloquist. You know, he looks, yeah, I'm looks so, better than he's uh, talking. I think uh, he does look as if you're working him from the back. We'll try and get Tam back. <laughs> but Ruffy, on the point, I'll get Tam's yeah, point yeah, on yeah. it because he's, he's right at the heart of it. Um, Gary Mackay is quite scathing on Craig Levine, uh, but I think he's got a point. I agree with him. Yeah, but I think in the last uh, two years, I don't think uh, Craig's done himself any favours. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, his career with Hearts <coughs> is longer than two years. I think you have to remember him as a player uh, and also everything that he's done for the club before all this kicked in. So, yeah, there will be a lot of anger just now. But, I mean, I would like to think that some people would, would still remember what he's done for the club as well. Uh, but fans are fans, you know, it's the, it's the present and uh, a lot of them might take a while to get around that one. It's funny you saying that, Ruffy. I think people can actually distance themselves, uh, Tam, from Craig Levine, the player, to Craig Levine, the manager. If I if I can just say this to you, Tam, uh, he was in for a fair bit of criticism before we got to the end of last season. Uh, two wins in 11 from the last 11 games. Obviously, he got them to the Scottish Cup final, which got him, um, I think, a new season. And in the new season, I looked at his record before he was sacked on the 31st of October. Five wins in 17 games and a lot of them were against lower league sides, the wins, one league win over Hibs. Other than that, it was far from impressive and the football was dire to watch. Yeah, uh, listen, Peter, I, I, I think he was he outstayed his welcome um, amongst the fans as well. I think the style of football has been turgid for two or three years under Craig Levine. 
you know, it was always long ball stuff, physical. And it was, it was even like that. And Barry will tell you himself, the Hearts teams of the early 2000s, when Craig was the manager, it was exactly the same. You know, they had a, a team of giants. They tried to bully you. You know, it was very, very physical, especially in Edinburgh derbies. And, uh, you know, I think that the, the, the worst thing is he's still at the club. You know, I think he's leaving at the end of the month. You know, you sack the manager, you know, you get him out the door. Why, why is he still lingering about, you know, at Hearts or, or, or at Rickerton at their training ground, Orium? You know, he's still there. You know, if you're going to sack him, you know, get rid of him, get him out the door. And uh, I think a lot of Hearts fans are really angry about that as well. I think they will look back with uh, anger at the situation they find themselves in. The manager has to carry the can. Results, uh, it, it's always the barometer of whether you've been a success or not, Barry. But I think a lot of people will look and, and say Anne Budge was, if anything, I don't think the word's naive, but I think she was too loyal to him and too loyal to listening to what he had to say. Yeah, I, I think she put a hell of a lot of trust in him, Peter. There's no doubt about that. When he was director of football, he pulled all the strings in the football side in terms of um, getting new managers in. And I think he had a massive say in which players were coming through the door. Uh, so I think Craig himself will admit that. He's, he's man enough to admit that his time in charge uh, was nowhere near good enough, especially with the budget that Hearts have got, Peter. Um, now it's in the past, they need to look forward now, um, but I think Anne Budge will look back in a few regrets, obviously, and Craig will be the same, Craig, Craig will be exactly be the same, he's made a few mistakes, a number of uh, bad signings, and as I say, Hearts have always got a healthy budget and can attract good players because of their training ground, the stadium, and they're a good club as well, Hearts, so yeah, I think time's up now, obviously, as Tam says. He's leaving at the end of the month. And now Hearts need to move forward, Peter. Yeah, I think moving forward, Ruffy, does not move forward with Daniel Stendhal. I think the announcement of the relegation, confirmation of that, will confirm <clears> his <throat> departure. And then I think it's all about building a heart side, a new heart side that can get them out of the championship, Ruffy. Even although yesterday on this show... David McKinnon still said that the, the task force were going to submit what, for me, looks a forlorn hope of reconstruction. Yeah, you, you spoke about that yesterday. I can see where you're coming from. You know, they're down a division. You know, the manager himself uh, might not have the appetite to, to go into that division if he's got contacts that he could get a job elsewhere. And the light of everything that's going on, you know, he'll know there's a census there, you know, waiting and him failing. So... Unless he's got somewhere else to go, I think he'll hang on in there. I think uh, it'll be another massive call for Anne Budge. You know, another one that you'll have to sit down and seriously think about and which way it's going to appease the supporters. Because for me, the heart supporters are the biggest uh, of everything that's happening just now. We saw them support the club right through everything to start. And it remains to be seen whether they get back behind them again. I think they will. Uh, I think they're buying season tickets already. It's a big call for Anne Budge. It's another massive one. And I think she'll have to take a lot of people on board before she makes that decision. Yeah, Paul McRoberts says, I think you're wrong, Peter, because they'll have to pay him compensation. Well, uh, the way things are looking at the moment, I've you know I've been reading up on his, his agent making comments, Tom McManus, basically saying, you know, obviously they'll look at things themselves because he, he doesn't want to manage a team in the championship in Scotland. So it's a bit of a Mexican standoff eventually of Hearts are relegated. Does he stay? Does he want to stay? Does Anne Budge actually want to keep him? Peter, I think at the very start, you know, I looked at the press conference with, with Stendhal and, and Anne Budge, and I, I just get the feeling, I don't know if you agree, that he, he didn't really feel as if 100% committed to Hearts. It just looked as if he didn't want to be there. And that that's, what, that's the thing that really annoyed me was... I just don't think he was he's totally committed to Hearts. And I think they can go and get somebody else who's totally committed to the to the club and getting them back up. Yeah, I mean, I, I get where Tom's coming from, Barry, on that one. Um, because quite simply, Pierre, what, what, I, I'm looking at... What, what did you say Stendhal's agent said? That if they go down to the what? Championship, he, he doesn't the, fancy it? 
No, they would have discussions. Basically, um, they would have discussions I mean, uh, on whether on whether it was uh, it was viable for him to continue. He, he didn't really fancy being mm. a championship manager, but discussions would take place. I mean, at the end of the day, I would. I, I, uh, me personally, I look at Daniel Stendel there. It took so long. This is another mistake Anne Budge made. She sacked Craig Levine on the thirty first of October, and we had to wait till December to see who they were going mm. to choose as a manager. And in comes Daniel. Mm. Stendhal with with one of the classic lines that boardrooms make. He comes with a great pedigree. We waited for our man, um, but mm. he didn't do it for me. Yeah, it took a bit of time for him to get him through the doors, Peter. Um, and then when he's come in, I've watched starts a few times, and uh, the way he plays with a high line, it, it doesn't suit Hearts. Um, but for me, even if Hearts go down to the Championship, Peter, it's a fantastic job. It's a massive club. Why would you yeah. not want to take that job and try and be the guy who gets them up? I don't understand if that's the comments that are coming out from Stendhal and his agent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, would you take it? The Kelty Hearts job. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of, just sort of fire it in there, Barry. You know, you know Scottish football. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you are. There yeah. you are. And that, He's not that's Barry. On that. No, that's that's Barry going back to what I call his Rangers captain days when he used to. Oh, just, here we go. Here just, we go. Yeah, there you are. Just a buy. There you are. Hold on to that. I'm not. I'm not going to answer your question. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, anyway, he would take it. Of course, he would. It's a massive job. Wait, listen, yeah. it's crazy. See if that job became available, you would honestly. The amount of applicants that had been for that job would be phenomenal. The amount of people. It's a, it's a top club, top stadium, great training ground, and they've got decent players. So who wouldn't want to take that job? You, you, would, you, you would get the fans right on side as well, Barry, if you brought me in as a coach. I think that would be that. <laughs> it would have uh, it would have the same same effect as as Tommy Burns following Walter Smith and Alex <laughs> just, Ibrox. Uh, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Tom. Uh, to be fair, it is. He, I think he's right, Ruffy. I don't know about you, but I mean, I love the the the, the stadium. It's a fantastic stadium for the atmosphere, oh. and it, it's absolutely bouncing. The only person that should obviously be seriously questioned is the guy who built the press area, because when it pelts mm -hmm. with rain in there, it's absolutely mental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, from a, from a football uh, point of view, it must be a wonderful stadium if you can go there and get a win. But since I never, ever achieved that, then I don't know what it felt like. So, so I, was always, <laughs> I was always leaving with my head down and right up that tunnel uh, and mm. the changing rooms. But Great no, you're stadium right. to play on. The atmosphere, the atmosphere behind the goals is, is, is just electric. Super. Yeah. Did you score best, best stadium, Peter? Best stadium to play on. Oh, I don't know, Peter. I'd need to have a look back. I'm not sure. Um, but it was always a tough game, Peter. Always the, the fans are right on you. I, I love that. I mean, you went, if the ball went out for a throw-in, they would be able to touch you. Electric atmosphere at Tynecastle. Always, always love going there to play. Peter, it's the best Tam atmosphere in Scotland for me. Best atmosphere in Scotland. Yeah. You know, I've played many yeah, yep. Edinburgh derbies. And I, I was like Ruffy. It was, I never won a game. I don't think at Tynecastle. I beat Hearts a few times at Easter Road, but... Couldn't get a win at uh, Tynecastle, but I did score there in a, in a derby game. Uh, yeah, oh, you did score? Yeah, but there was a, it was a four each game. We'll only talk about that. Of course, you were 4 2 up with about two minutes to go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can see the pain written all over your face, um, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, best, uh, best, that's an interesting one, Ruffy, isn't it? Um, no, I have to have to say I agree with the guys. You know, you take Rangers and Celtic at the equation. Aberdeen is a good stadium, but it doesn't generate the atmosphere as it does at Tynecastle. You know, and the rest of the stadiums. I mean, Hibs obviously I played there for six or seven years, uh, and the old stadium, not the new stadium. I think the new stadium, when it's full, uh, is a very very good atmosphere. Uh, it must be great to play there as well. But apart from that, the rest of the clubs, you know, they, they, they definitely don't have a full capacity house like Tynecastle that actually, you can actually feel the rafters and you're on the part. You can once they're all in full force. It's absolutely a tremendous atmosphere to play in. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Stephen Smith says, Robbo and Barry, the Hearts dream team. Yeah, uh, I mean, we know ourselves, uh, Tam, we're eventually going to lose Barry in the PLZ team, you know, but we just gotta, we just got to hang on and hope we get one last end-of-season party with him before he obviously heads off to Pastures New. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that is fair. I think that you, you, we know Barry, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a mercenary. Um, as soon as somebody comes in, they're better off. Barry will be off. And uh, listen, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm delighted that Mike Ashley keeps sending him gear. Uh, he's at wee PSG <laughs> top on the day, so. Oh, he's, he's looking he's well. I tell you what. <laughs> hey, never buy for Sports Direct, mate. Never. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 can I just say that there are normal thinking people out there who actually do buy from Sports Direct. You can buy from whoever you like, as simple as that. Can you see me digging those out of that hole there, Ruffy? Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't want to be in a long no, list no, of people I who... No, I don't want to be in a long, I don't want to be in a long yeah, list of people who go to court with no. Mike Ashley, Barry. Um, anyway, uh, well, I don't fancy. I, yeah, I don't fancy going to court with Mike Ashley, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think Real so. Sports going, Direct's right. okay. It's all right, Sports yes. Direct. It's all right for the Donny Soaks. How far? <laughs> how far can you? How far can? How far can you backtrack that room you're in? Yeah, absolutely. I can. I'm against I can it. Back. Listen, I'm right next to the door in case an announcement comes out. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, apart from anything else, yeah, um, other outlets are available, says George Mullen. George, thank you for <laughs> digging me out of the hole. Well done to you. Um, listen, guys, I'll tell you one thing. Hi to David Larter, who's joined us, Stuart Grant, Charles Denham, William Innes, everyone um, uh, joining us on Facebook. Thank you. Don't forget to share the stream with your friends, like and follow us as well, and you'll get all sorts of great information. And thank you to the people. And next, uh, next week we'll be using some of the video messages. If you want to ask Barry a question, then download the PLZ Soccer app, hit Video Reporter, and record your message because there'll be nothing better next week, Ruffy, if we actually start showing yeah. videos of the fans asking you, Barry, and Tam questions. That would yeah. be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I have to. I would have to insist that they have to be live. I don't think they can record. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, to be yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry, they'll be vetted. Don't you worry about it, by the way. Well done, uh, Pe well done Peter. Uh, yeah, you're going to say well done, Pedro, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. Um, anyway, yeah, absolutely. They will be vetted um, because there's more than a few that have been dropped in already. So Derek Scott says, get John Robertson. Uh, so it's as simple as that. Graham, buddy. Uh, hi to Graham, who's joined us on uh, Facebook as well. And, and let's not forget, I'll mention uh, more than a few people on YouTube who've subscribed now. In the, and it's going uh, right through the roof as far as... Uh, YouTube is concerned as well. Thanks to everyone for that. Uh, and this one here from David Clark on YouTube says, hey guys, quick question. Do you think reconstruction will be back on the table before the new season? Ruffy, I, I mean, it was it was something um, that was mooted. And also, Tam, keep this in mind. Uh, somebody says, can you ask Tam, David Anderson says, can you ask Tam what's his record against Hearts? Hang fire on that, Tam, at the moment and get your thinking cap on. Ruffy, I mean, reconstruction, I, want, I wonder if they'll try and at least throw something up in the next week as a last-ditch effort. Well, all credit to them. You know, if you're, as David McKinnon said yesterday, if you're put on a committee to do something, you know, you want to see it out, you know, they, they should have waited uh, until they got the final say and what, and really got a, a, an agenda of what the championship and the first and the second division would have wanted to put forward instead of just blasting it out the window without seeing if it was 14-10-10 or 14-14-14 or whatever. You know, it would have been great if they'd just sat around the table and discussed it. Uh, and I, I never mentioned it the other day, but I was I was quite surprised, Peter, with Gordon Scott uh, from, from St Mirren to say when he was on that uh, conference call last week, he thought they were just debating it. And then all of a sudden they decided there was enough people didn't like it in the conference, so they just called it. So again, yeah. things looked as if it was a wee bit rushed. But I, now that they've now that they've came out that there is at least five of them don't want it, then it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what they get put in front of them. But fair dues to the guys who are out there and, and going to see it through at the end. And let's 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 see what they come up with. Let's just see what the majority of clubs really really do want in the league reconstruction. 
Yeah, Dougie Little said he's disgusted with the club's over reconstruction. Tom White on Facebook says, this, are you guys going to be picking a German team for the weekend? We are, uh, Tom. We're going to pick a German team shortly. Tom, uh, what about your derby record? What was it? Oh, wasn't it great, Peter? Um, probably won four, four or five games, all, all of them at home. Um, but lost a lot more than that, particularly at Tynecastle. As I said to you, I was at Hibs for seven years. And I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a winning team at Tynecastle, and I was including some dramatic draws and, and whatever. But no, I had a poor record against Hearts. You know, I've got to hold my hand up. Are you, Tom? Tom, are you are you, are you in the Hibs Hall of Fame? No, are, are you, Ruffy? I mean, seven, seven years is a, seven years is a long time at a club. No, he's I nasty. Sort of he's nasty. Teams, teams, so. yeah. You would have thought seven years you would have gotten ducked. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in the Hall of Shame after my night out in Edinburgh at the strippers. Yeah, so he's just, uh, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for that, Tom. We didn't really want you to mention that, but now that you oh. have, everybody's aware of that. They'll, they'll be looking up the old, <laughs> they, they would be looking up the old Sunday mails if you hadn't bought them all to stop your mum from seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, apart from, apart from anything else, uh, the other thing I was going to say to you guys is, is of course, uh, we're going to speak to Murdo McLeod shortly. Murdo will talk about the Bundesliga. Uh, obviously um, talk about the Scottish Premiership as well as his old mucker, uh, Tommy Burns. Um, but uh, Bundesliga, we're getting football back. Here's some of the, here's some of the players uh, to look out for when the Bundesliga comes back live this weekend. Yeah, the Rangers fans will know all about Kai Havertz from their previous encounter at Ibrox in the Europa League, still to be resolved with, uh, you know, Bayer Leverkusen leading at the moment after the first leg. But uh, as far as the German uh, football is concerned, it's going to be played uh, this weekend. Will you be tuning in, Barry? Is it something you're thinking, oh, just want to see a game of live football? Uh, 100%, Peter. I'll be tuning in. I'm desperate just to watch a live game. It wouldn't matter if it was a German or, or whatever. I just want to watch live football, and to be fair, some very good teams on Germ German teams are always good, Peter. I was lucky enough to come up against a number of them, uh, always physically strong, but technically good as well. So I'll be tuning in tomorrow, no doubt about that. <coughs> yeah. What of the only live football was a, a kind of a, a mini Celtic league with Celtic playing Celtic reserves? Would you watch that, Barry? <laughs> <laughs> um, <or> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I just, 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 just testing your results. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. 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 Yeah, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, Tom nah, are you going to watch? I watch, I watch <laughs> any kind of football. I watch any kind, apart from Celtic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now listen, I've got to give out, I mentioned George, George uh, Mullen, who's a regular, Gary Miller as well, Dennis Mostyn, uh, and also uh, we always give a mention to Gary McGurn. Gary, thanks for joining us on the programme. It's great that so many people uh, are uh, mentioning us. Can I just say, Tam, are you going to be watching the Bundesliga? Yeah, absolutely. I'm desperate to watch a game, Peter. Um, listen, there's, there's some great teams, as Barry was saying. There are some good games on. I think it's live in BT Sport. I'm just looking forward to seeing how, how it all works out with the closed door scenario. You know, it's interesting to see the players walking out, players tackling each other. You know, how, how it all works. Is it, you know, is it going to be scared? Is it going to be, you know, you play, we play, not a lot of pressing going on, not a lot of tackling, scared to get near people at set pieces. So I'm just interested to see how it all works out behind closed doors. And I'm sure the English Premiership will be watching it very closely as well because that will be their template for, for getting their leagues up and running as well. Yeah, well, they certainly won't be getting uh, the League 2 up and running in uh, the English uh, uh, football because they've just declared uh, 
League Two in England. That's over for the season. So their positions will uh, be uh, where they are sitting in the league at the moment. Uh, so I think uh, the uh, first division in England and then the Championship uh, have a decision to make. But June 12th, the English Premier League hopes to get back up and running. But there's a fair few discussions to go since uh, until then. Uh, just on that point there, Tam makes a very good point, Ruffy. The players walk out, there's no wall of noise. There's certainly no yellow wall at <coughs> the Westvalen Stadium where Borussia Dortmund are taking Aww. on Schalke. Um, which is, uh, if anybody's been to the Westvalen Stadium, it is absolutely fantastic. Barry, have you played there? Yeah, Peter, that's unbelievable atmosphere. One behind the goal will they all stand. The atmosphere was absolute electric. Now, I, I know I said about Tyne Castle, my, my favourite Scottish ground for atmosphere, but that was something special over there. I couldn't believe Barry, it. The noise, was, the noise was incredible, Tam. I have never, ever did heard you, did, any noise like it. Did you play for Scotland against Germany uh, in that stadium? I played there as, played there yeah. as well. I played, obviously, Dortmund. And uh, the Champions League as well. Nah, I was at that game uh, with the Scotland 21s. I was watching the, and we were in the stadium <laughs> that, that night. The atmosphere was incredible. Oh, it's yeah. crazy, I think, isn't it? Crazy. I think, I, I think it'll be wonderful watching these players that you've just flashed up there. I think Germany uh, have got so many young players coming through now. That I think they'll start to be a force again. Uh, I, I think the most. Tam touched on it there. I think it will be very apparent, you know, the lack of a crowd, the lack of atmosphere, the lack of the buzz in the ground. And it'll be interesting to see if that whets your appetite, you know, watching that kind of game with the, uh, the, the supporters that are vital to the game who aren't there, you know. And would you, are, are you would, just going to be. Sorry, Peter. Would you, be, would you be happy, Ruffy, if they put in uh, a fake crowd noise? I think they might have to do something because I haven't played in a, a, a game that there's been no supporters and I think it'll be very tinny. Uh, it'll be, horrible. I don't know the word, it'll be a horrible, horrible atmosphere. So mm. I don't know what, what they'll have to do because we obviously know the football is going to be of a, of a high quality, but I, mm. I just think the, fa the fans make it, and no doubt about it, a full, a full stadium cranked up makes a, a, a bad game a good game. Yeah, Tom, you could actually get to a situation, I know you're going to laugh here, Tom, when I suggest this, right? But we used to, you know, from time to time, <clears throat> if for whatever reason in the sound situation when I was working at STV in the early days when we had football, in the early days, if you had a game that had come in that was being edited and it didn't have the proper sound of the crowd on it, you would edit in uh, various, you know, crowd effects uh, for that match. You could actually have a situation where you have a keyboard and it goes close miss and you hit the button and the crowd goes, ooh. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I'd be brilliant. I'm not kidding I'd be great. Anyway. Yeah. I think I'd, I'd be really good. And, uh, no. The ball hits the back of the net, you hit the button, it goes, hey! I think that'd be great. And you're talking about Atmospheres, you know, I played in plenty of reserve games, so they, they count as closed door games, I'm afraid. So I'm, 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 I'm very well versed in the no Peter, fan situation. There's, uh, Peter, there's nothing worse. I mean, I, I played in, um, against Inter Milan and the San Siro, it was closed doors, it was horrible. It's like a pre season game, it was, even if it was in Europe, it just it had that feeling. Of, it just didn't feel like being in the Champions League. It was horrible. The game was, it was a poor, poor game as well. Um, so I didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy it at all. You going to say something there, Ruffy? No, I'm just saying the Americans have been doing that for uh, for ages, playing music at the side of the grounds. You know, uh, when somebody was charging up the park, there'd be a guy in a trumpet playing "Charge of the Light Brigade" yeah. and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, I told you, I told you, we went up to play, we went out to play Washington <laughs> Diplomats. And uh, it was about 100 degrees, and there was nothing happening on the park. Even the Americans were. At walking pace, the next minute the boy came on the tannoy and said, we're now going to have the pass the chicken competition in the stand. <laughs> and uh, he passed this, passed this chicken about the stand with the music to go with it. And when the music like stopped, chicken. if you had the... Uh, aye, and if you had the chicken, you got chicken for the rest of the month supplied by the sponsor. The, the game was so <laughs> murder. I couldn't keep my eyes off where the chicken was going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it end up? Yeah, oh, exactly. something caught it eventually. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to say, oh. um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how they do this. Anyway, apart from anything else, Bayern Munich are out in front, uh, closely followed by Borussia Dortmund. Then it's RB Leipzig and then Bayer Leverkusen. So, um, I, I, in fact, I beg your pardon, um, Munchen Gladbach. Um, I, I'm looking at the, the, the line-up for it. And, and Bayern Munich, Tam, are going for eight in a row if they can win this with the remaining nine games. Yeah, they are, but I think they'll have, they'll have, a, have a real fight in their hands. You know, Dortmund are, are, are up there, Leipzig are a good side as well. So, you know, Bayern Munich have always been a dominant force in, in German football. Um, me personally, I like to see Borussia Mönchengladbach uh, up there because Rainer Bonhoff, who was my old under-21 coach at Scotland, uh, is the general manager at, at Mönchengladbach. And uh, he was one of the best managers, one of the best guys I've ever worked under. So I'd like, yeah. they'd, they'd probably be my pick, Mönchengladbach, to see how they got on uh, because of Rainer. Yeah, Gary Adam is in America and he says that must have been in the 80s, Ruffy, when you were talking about the sponsored yeah. chicken. Was it? Yeah, definitely was, yeah. Uh, they had, we, played, uh, we, t- we played Tampa Bay Rowdies on uh, the 4th of July and there was, I think it was 6,000 people in the stadium to see the game and there was 23,000 in the stadium to see the firework display at the end of the game. You know, that's what the Americans were like way back there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, listen, it's a different kettle of fish now. It's certainly picked up because there's more grassroots Americans playing football now as well in the schools. They're embracing it. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, so uh, he scored 39 goals, Lewandowski. He's on fire. Uh, I noticed you mentioned there the likes of uh, Jaden Sancho and Timo Werner, who could be playing in the English Premier League next season. So there's a lot of special players. Certainly looking forward to it. Um Okay, we've got uh, Murder McLeod coming now, guys, um, and then we'll come back and get your thoughts on who you think is going to win the league. Um, uh, I mean, in Germany. Uh, the other point I was going to make to you guys, Murder McLeod. <laughs> <Murder> McLeod. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. Uh, Murder McLeod, uh, Paul Lambert, uh, Scott Booth. Is there anybody else who's Scottish that's played in Germany? That you Alan McAnally. Alan McAnally for the Bayern München. Yep. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Like Rambo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The big man, he was a <laughs> sensation there for uh, Bayern Munich for a season. Um, anybody yeah, else, big set, The young centre-half boy for Rangers went over, didn't he? Oh, aye. Bates, Bates, that's Bates. right. Bates, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. Um, Mark, and I'm Mark sure Fotheringham. Great shout, Tam McManus. Mark Fotheringham as well did. Yeah. So there's five. There's five right away. Uh, I'm sure somebody else will, will, will mention somebody uh, that's played in Germany who might have been of a Scottish persuasion. Um, anyway, stick with us. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and follow on Facebook, uh, and also subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. Uh, earlier on, I caught up with uh, former Celtic and Borussia Dortmund midfielder, and of course, Scotland caps are plenty. Murdo McLeod. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by uh, former Celtic, Borussia Dortmund and Scotland midfielder Murdo McLeod. Murdo, as ever, great to see you fit and well. Uh, and the good news is I, I know the rest of the family are fit and well as well. Uh, I, I presume you'll be dying to hug them at some point when you all get back together. Oh, I know. It's been, uh, that's been the worst part of it all. I, I, I can still see the family. They're, they're, they're all living in Helmsborough and... It's great uh, to see them from a distance, but uh, the grandkids, my, my, my daughters, you know, you've got to give them a hug now and again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're all itching also as well, Murdo, to try and get back to football. And lo and behold, the only uh, country that seems to have got it all right is the Germans. Uh, you would be in the least bit surprised <laughs> by that. Ex- <laughs> yeah, what else do you expect, Peter? The German technology. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, super efficiency. Of course, the other thing about it is that we all wanted to go um, smoothly. We certainly don't want any hitches with anyone suffering from the coronavirus. And, and, and I wonder, do you think they're taking a gamble? I don't know. Because, Peter, you, you could uh, let it drag on and drag on, and eventually you'll have another game behind closed doors, and somebody could get uh, affected again. So at some point, you, you, you've got to start... It's, the whole of life, you've got to start somewhere, and this is a start because you, you look at all the, all the big countries France, Holland, Belgium, you know, they gave up their leagues uh, a couple of weeks ago, three, three or four weeks ago. But now the Germans are thinking, let's get started again because if we don't get started just now, it's going to drag on into ninth, then even the following month. And when will a football fan 
be allowed back into the stadium. It's a long time in the future. Of course, the Germans are playing behind closed doors. Just looking at the league itself, Murdo, um, the memories must come flooding back. Borussia Dortmund are in action this weekend. They're trying to catch Bayern Munich. Something's never changed. Bayern Munich going for eight in a row. Yeah, it's fantastic. They've been a, a fantastic club over all the years. Even the years when I was out there, they were always the team at the top. They, they were there. Stuttgart were one of the, the, the big ones at that time. But uh, no, Bayern Munich, it's, they're a hard side to beat. They've been fantastic in European football. They've been great at, at home. But now, now I'm just hoping that Dortmund can come with a wee run. It's, but it's one of their, the, the biggest games for them. Obviously, the Bayern Munich game is a big game, but to play Schalke in this opening game with no supporters in the, the stadium is just going to be unbelievable because it, the, the Dortmund players over all the years you, th you were thriving on the atmosphere in the ground. It was absolutely the, the best anywhere you went. Absolutely fantastic noise in the ground and not a soul was going to be there. It's the most outrageous thing. Uh, the team's come out with no yellow wall for the first time in many a long year, as you mentioned there. Uh, let's hope they've recorded the yellow wall <laughs> down through the, the years so they can fire it out there. Uh, but as far as Dortmund are concerned, I mean, they've got some players that I think, and I hope I'm not doing them a, a disservice, but I think, uh, like so many German clubs, they may be cherry-picked by the English Premier League. One of them, uh, Jadon Sancho, uh, plays for yeah. Dortmund, as well as Erling Haaland, who's been an absolute sensation. Yeah, but, uh, both of them have been great, great together. Uh, Sancho a wee bit wider than the, 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 the pitch, and but still scoring a lot of goals in Harlan. He's, he's been outstanding as well. So it's been happening over all, all, the, all the, the last four years. A lot of the players are leaving Dortmund uh, just because of the, the quality. And the, 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 I think the English clubs now are beginning to watch what's happening in German football because over the years not many players move from Germany to England but I think now they're, they're beginning to go over to England, uh, Germany to have a look at some of the players and uh, Sancho he'll go for an awful lot of money you know, we always think when a player in Scotland if they're going to go way up towards 20 million or no I say no that's a fantastic amount of money but it'll be way up at 70 80 million these players will be moving for yeah, I'm looking at that table, Murdo. Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, four points behind, a point further back's Leipzig, and then at a push, Borussia München Gladbach. But, uh, you know, can anyone stop Bayern? Because they've got a 31-year-old in uh, Lewandowski who scored 39 goals before the season, uh, you know, ended so quickly. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, just as well. It's, it's stopped already for them, but... Uh, yeah. Hopefully for Dortmund that he doesn't start scoring again. Because I think uh, Peter at the start of the season, I think he went about 12, 13 games, scoring in every single game, the first 13, 14 games. So he's just, just a goal machine. But when you've got someone like that in your team, no matter what league you're in, if you've got a goal scorer, you're going to do well. You're going to be up the, the top end. And Bayern are always going to be up the top end when you've got a, score, a goal scorer that's scoring so many goals. But I, I'm just hoping, I think Dortmund in a couple of weeks, so that, 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 that's a, a chance for Dortmund uh, to, to close the gap. Let's hope the Germans are able to finish their season. It's not quite the same out with the big five nations. Of course, we're getting ever closer to the SPFL declaring the season here. Do you have any argument with it at all that Celtic will be champions, Hearts will be relegated? Well, I think... Well, Looking at the whole scenario that Celtic, you just felt after the turn of the year when Rangers, for me, you felt they were going to have a chance. And then the run that Rangers went on and the run Celtic went on were two different directions. Celtic won every game uh, since the turn of the year and Rangers have dropped so many points for a, a team that was going to challenge. And I, I don't think there's... There's any way that Rangers can come back to, to, to beat Celtic. Celtic, for me, will, within the next two or three games, uh, will have the championship tied up. Yeah, and by declaring it, I mean, there's no way we're going to finish it. Um, do you think, uh, I mean, they're going to get it in the neck anyway, the SPFL, when they declare Celtic champions? That's the thing. And uh, I'm sure every single Celtic supporter and every player on the pitch for Celtic wants to win it on the park. No, it's 
no, a, a lot of teams kind of walked away. I think Juventus walked away. They didn't want it to be just handed to them. They, they want to win it. But uh, if somebody's going to hand it to you, and that if that's the, the law of the land you do, if they hand it to you, you just got to accept it. Uh, just before you go, Mardon, it would be remiss of me not to mention a, a day like today. It was uh, tremendous sadness. I can remember heading back up from Manchester um, after Rangers and the UEFA Cup final to learn of the the sad passing of Tommy Burns. He was a, a great friend. I think uh, lots of us, maybe uh, if we want to quantify it, get one or two percent of our time in his company and he touched us in such a way that uh, you never forget him and you more than anyone you know you were one of his teammates what was it like oh just fantastic you know it's when uh, when you, you go over you know the anniversaries uh you know you, you go back the memories come back in and the way tommy was about the dressing room peter it was you know just so much so special you know he was a special football player but he was a special person as well. And you know, when I went in, uh, I signed for Celtic on the Thursday in the dressing room on the Friday and he's got his hand right, arm around my neck. I mean, this is the best club in the world. You'll never play for a, a better club and the supporters are great. They'll love you. And you go out there and you go and fight for this team. They'll, they'll be fighting for you all the time. All, all, all these kind of things. And that's, that's the way Tommy was, day in, day out. And it was, it, his head was never down. He was always there, he was chirpy, great in the dressing room, but for, for me on the pitch, he was just a fantastic football player. Yeah, the, the 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 one joy for me, Mordo, it wasn't quite um, you know at your level of football, but uh, when he chucked it and he was training all the youths, he, he just phoned me up and said, "Right, get your men down here. We're playing eleven sides at Barrafield." <laughs> his pa his patter was absolutely sensational. I mean, he called me Benny from Top Cat, so as you can imagine, he had a one <laughs> he, he had a one he had a one liner for everybody, didn't he? He did. Oh, everyone. No matter if someone's not playing so well and all that kind of thing, you'll, you'll call them something and everybody will just have a laugh and move on. But he was just there. Yeah, I, I remember the, the time I was I was going on at training and uh, I was going on and I said, I'm in a hurry today. I've got to get back. For, I can't even mind what it was for. Maybe picking up the kids or whatever I was doing, Peter. And, and I get back to the dressing room and I'm looking for my clothes. And I cut my clothes <laughs> and Tam had hid them. Today is Tommy's anniversary, but today I was flying to Madrid to a selfie supporters gig for the Tommy Burns supper. And that that was today and it just it just when we got it sorted about uh, three months ago to, to to go out to Madrid, I thought that would be fantastic. Right on the day of uh, Tommy's passing, and it's uh, all the supporters in Madrid are going to have a great night for us uh, out there, and we chat with them. And sadly, because of what's going on in the world just now, we're, we're missing going over there. Yeah, absolutely, I I, and I'm. Sh I, I think Peter, when you when you go around the football world, everyone has a good word to say about Tommy Burns. You know, I mean, all, all the all the clubs, all the clubs, all the supporters, all the players that played against him in his time, because he was he's great on and off the park to, to both sets of players. Obviously, when he's got the green and white hoops on, that was it. Just we've got to win that day all the time. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely tribute to him because, uh, you know, you only have to look at the people who were carrying his coffin on the day with Ali McCoyston and, and Walter Smith there paying the ultimate tribute to him. He was one of those players, I think, that uh, transcended uh, the old firm divide as well. And I'm sure from Murdo and everyone on the football show, uh, our thoughts are with his family because they will feel it uh, certainly uh, the toughest of days uh, remembering their dad and, uh, you know, all those happy times. If you've met him for one day, you feel as if you knew him for a thousand days it's as simple as that uh, Murdo uh, it's been great chatting to you um, I know just having a look at the background there that looks as if it could be an actual original uh, Vetriano painting I'm hoping it's a copy uh, just, uh, that's all I'm saying to you I just I don't I don't I don't want uh, I don't want you showing off with original paintings on the wall <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. In Hellsborough, I mean, <laughs> who wants to drive out to Hellsborough to break into your house, for God's sake? It's it's meter and a half in a taxi. Nobody wants to go out there. <laughs> Murdo, it's a joy speaking to you. Thanks for joining us. Great, Peter. Thank you very much for having me on. Cheers. See, see, Ruffy, that's the type of thing you should have. A bit of class like Murdo on the back of his wall, a Vetriano painting. Does it get any better? Yeah, I know. I had Barry saying he's got a Rembrandt up in his wee ducket up the road. You know, just, <laughs> with this, they put up in a, a, a bag Barry off saying, somewhere. What's, what's a Vetriano? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do you know what one is? Italian pasta. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, the automatic thing I was thinking of, I thought, oh, I can't remember Rembrandt playing for Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from anything else. Uh, Murdo, good to hear from him. But of course, somebody else mentioned to us there, Tam. Brian O'Neill played in Germany. So he did. So he did. Mark McGee. Mark McGee, that's a disgrace. He, he, you know, he's been on the show. Uh, Mark McGee played in Germany. So there's more than a few people. And thank you to, to everyone. Um, and Gary Adams says, listen, let's not forget, Ruffy did have Sporty Spice's knickers signed in a frame behind him one day on the wall, which will he never did. be topped. I, I don't think so, Barry. I mean, when you think about the type of things you get framed, <laughs> who in the right mind gets Sporty Spice's knickers framed? Oh, the, the guy's crazy. Listen, the only things I've got framed is Ranger stuff, Peter, as you know. So, yeah. Well, That's good to be fair, to, well, I was just about to say to you, to be fair, Barry, I mean, yesterday <coughs> on the show, would you believe, we were talking about, um, who was the guest yesterday, Murdo? That's disgraceful that I can't remember. Um, Dave McKinnon. Was on the show. McKinnon. Dave, Dave McKinnon. McKinnon. Dave, David McKinnon, who mentioned uh, right away, you know, about him uh, meeting Kenny Rogers, and he told a great Kenny Rogers story, and I thought it wouldn't be topped. And then, and then Ruffy just comes in and absolutely baseball bats everybody with, yeah, I went up to the room with Rod Stewart, and Brett Eklund was lying on the bed. I mean, you just don't get stuff. You don't, you don't beat that story, Barry. You just don't beat it. You just have to take your medicine. What happened, Ruffy? No, I didn't well, ask well, him. Well, Shut well, up. Well, I didn't ask him. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, absolutely magnificent. The year we were looking for was 1973. And the reason I mentioned that, Ruffy, is because uh, there was a picture there of Johan Cruyff in our quiz at the start of the programme. Uh, that was his third European Cup. And, and I thought you, Johan Cruyff was a, a, an unbelievable player. You know, and I think in Barcelona, he's a god. But as you see the years going on, Johan Cruyff is suddenly, you know, for me, he was the, the, the top yeah. three players in the world. And because of Ronaldo and Messi, suddenly some of the players that you thought were the greatest ever are going down that list, aren't they? Yeah. But I, I think uh, you always uh, sort of a scale, a world-class player. And I always say, you know, you can, do it, you can do it at club level, but can you go to a World Cup and can you grab the World Cup with the scruff of the net? and playing against the best teams in the world. And I think Cruyff did that uh, in, in the World Cup, you know, the time when they beat Brazil 2-0. Uh, I thought that, that him and that, that Dutch team were absolutely superb then. So for me, yeah, he did it at the highest level. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, listen, I've got my five top German players uh, that from my childhood, the lot that I absolutely loved because it's the return of the Bundesliga guys. So I'm going to give you my five. Ruffy, you'll need to come up with your five. But Franz Beckenbauer um, is in my all-time World eleven, as is Gerd Müller. Uh, and the other three players I've picked is Paul Breitner, Jürgen Klinsmann and Lothar Matthias. There's my five mm. top, top Germans. Can anybody add something other than the five I've mentioned. Well, He's well, my top I've, one, Peter Matthias. Yeah. Um, watched him in the 1990 World Cup and then I was lucky enough to play against him in the old Olympic Stadium against Bayern Munich. What a player he was. <laughs> Frightening. Mm. Anybody Matthias else you can think of? Ooh, Matthias Sammer, yeah. Yeah, he played yeah, with Paul I've Lambert, got, I think. Yeah. Mm. I've got your three, Peter. Yeah, Beckenbauer, Muller and Breitner. I'm going to throw in Balak. Uh, and obviously a goalkeeper, Schumacher, absolutely unbelievable. What about uh, Oliver Kahn, Ruffy? No, Schumacher for me. 
Schumacher. Ruffy's getting him banned or something. Uh, yeah. And, and, and Wolf. <laughs> seen Wolf, my racing driver. The, the guys will know no, this. Guys will know it. Wolf Gang Overath. Oh, Overath was a good well, player. Well, it's a bit yeah. early before the guys. He's super eight. Yeah. He, nicked, he, nicked he, the, he, nicked, he nicked the bird off me in a pre-season tour. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, honestly, just just when you thought, just, just when you thought you were getting informed football <laughs> chats, Wolfgang over us, that will and, and and when he eventually passes away, that'll be on his tombstone. He he nicked a bird yeah. off Ruffy on a preseason uh, tour. Uh, honestly, um, yeah, yeah. Where about? And, uh, it was over in Germany in a preseason tour. I'd worked you about four, yeah. four, four, uh, no, no, I'd worked about three or four hours in this, and he just walked in and snapped his finger. <laughs> Go on. Because you, you couldn't speak a lingo. Go on. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I did. I went, hey, hey, where are you going? Oh, <laughs> uh, Gary O'Neill's mentioned somebody. Gary O'Neill has mentioned somebody that I've got absolutely no time for whatsoever. Uh, Keith Berry. Uh, has mentioned somebody that I can't believe you never mentioned, Rob. You're a disgrace because I think he was yeah. possibly, up until Neuer or Kahn, the best goalkeeper of all time in Germany, Seth Meyer. Seth Meyer. Yeah. I mean, how could you not mention him? Ever, and, he, was, he was the first goalkeeper ever to wear goal, goalkeeper gloves. Is that right? Well, there you are. Yeah. That's a great yeah. one. And, and, and which German city did he nick a bird off you? <laughs> no, this is at Hamden. I met I met him at Hamden. I was on safe right. ground there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Voller. Plums. <laughs> Rudy Voller. Yeah, and the Rudy other one Voller, here, yeah. which which I've got no time for, is Carl Heinz Rummenigge. Because um, oh. why have I got no time for him? Because he wants it just to be an elite sixteen teams in the Champions League, and to hell with everybody else. <laughs> and he's nicked a bird off you, Peter. <laughs> well, I'll never forget that, by the way. It was the uh, Mardi Gras in Glasgow, um, and I could see him heading out the door with him. Um, anyway, on that note, Ruffy, who managed to descend us into who nicked, who nicked the bird for me, um, can I just say at this point, we've run right out of time. I do hope you've enjoyed the, the, the show tonight. Uh, all I would say is it's also the anniversary of the passing of Hugh McDonald's favourite player of all time. Um, and I think it would be remiss of us not to remember him because uh, when we had Bertie on the show, Ruffy, Bertiold said to us that when Celtic won the European Cup, there were three world-class players in their team. Can you remember the three that he mentioned? Uh, uh, Bobby Murdoch was definitely one of them. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, another one. Uh, would it have been Tommy Gamer? Yeah, Tommy Gemmell was the third one. Well remembered, Ruffy. We had Bertie on the show. And of course, it's uh, the anniversary of... You know, a world class player passing away on this very day, Bobby Murdoch. glad that photograph was in there, Barry, because I don't know if you're aware of this, Bobby Murdoch actually moved to Middlesbrough where a young Graham Soonis was in the side mm. and he absolutely uh, loved playing alongside him. He said he learned so much from him. He was mm. unbelievable. It's, it's amazing how people's lives can, can cross over and have an impact on each other. Yeah, uh, look, I knew obviously Graham Soonis started out there. Um, what, what a midfielder he was. I, I don't know too much about Bobby Murdoch as a as a player, Peter, but just reading there, um, what a career he had, and obviously he was a, a special player for um, Celtic. Yep, uh, what are you guys going to get up to uh, at the weekend? Um, Baz, I've been telling you to get into The Last Dance. It's the best documentary I've watched. Are you going to watch it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to watch it. I've started Unibomber on net Netflix, so I'll finish that, and then I'll watch Last Dance, but I've got a our awards night 
uh, tomorrow night on gym for the club. So we'll have a wee couple of drinks. And it's the first time I've seen everybody since obviously we got awarded the, the title. So we'll have a, a few drinks tomorrow night. And some of the guys will get the awards. I don't know about you, Tam. It would be magnificent if we managed to wangle a password to get <laughs> onto that Zoom. Can you imagine, oh. the, mayhem? Can you imagine the mayhem we would cause if we had a password Barry, for that Zoom party? Barry, Barry, You're more than ba- welcome, ba- by the way. Ba- Barry will be more steaming. Barry, Barry will be blitzed. Oh, I'll be keen, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I can just imagine it midway through that Zoom meeting. There's only one guilty ass. They'll, they'll, all, they'll all be singing, they'll all be buried. It'll be the but, the but bouncy. Well, I was going to say to you, Barry, is this not a is this not a championship winning Zoom party? Yeah, look, listen, Peter, it's the first time of um, we actually were thinking about doing a Zoom when we, we got the award, but we decided. Um, the player of the year dance was going to be the middle of May, so we'll just make it a double a double hit. And it'll be good to see everybody, Peter. I've only spoke to the the guys on the phone and there's not been a lot of contacts because there's not been a lot to tell them. So it'll be great to see their faces and have a few yeah. drinks the morning yeah. night. Well, listen, from everyone in the football show, we'd like to wish Kelty all the very best for winning the title. The great news is, Barry, you've managed to make it through this show and Celtic haven't been awarded the title yet, so that's <laughs> great news for you. Uh, Tam, We're Tam, raging. <laughs> Tam, <laughs> Tam, 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 what will you be doing this weekend, son? Uh, not a lot. I'll be sitting watching the telly again and watching some box sets, some films and... There's not much else to do, is there, guys? Let's be honest. Um, just keep your head up and keep ploughing away. Yeah, you going to watch the last dance? I've got, I've got the last two to watch. Um, which I th- yeah, <coughs> I, I'm up to date on that. But there's a couple of films I've looked at on Netflix that look quite good. So I'm going to watch him. Very good lady. Yeah. Uh, Ruffy, from your own point of view, I would imagine you'll have an, an exciting weekend. We are hanging on your every word. What are you up to? <laughs> no, basically, weekends for me are a nightmare. Uh, it is the long weekend, as far as I'm concerned. No, I'll just be the usual out painting somewhere, cutting a tree down, you know, just then the end to pass the time. I'll go out for a walk, obviously, and back for a meal and have a wee gin and tonic. Ah, fantastic. And somebody has just said to us, Barry, <laughs> if we were going to have a great red wine over the weekend, would you like to suggest one for us? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what website you go on Belsimo um, one of your players he owns it he gets organic red wine Peter it's fantastic stuff what's the what's the, what's the wine Alice, uh, Alissimo is that the way Bellissimo 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 right okay fantastic right, good website yeah. he bring he, brilliant he, and I've got I've, he's got a few organic red wines I'll Oh. Get use a few bottles from him. You'll, you'll get a discount yeah. if you yeah. mention Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, no, I'll give him a new two-year it... contract if he gives us a, so... a right few bottles free. Hold <laughs> it, Ruffy's trying to get in. Go on uh, then. On no, I'm just going to wonder, is it homegrown <laughs> Kelty stuff? <laughs> oh dear, listen, you don't want that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's rocket yeah. that's rocket fuel yeah <laughs> absolutely anyway listen let's not besmirch the uh, people of Kelty they're good people um, it's as simple as that uh, listen uh, thanks to everyone like share and follow us if you can we really would uh, love your support uh, the figures for the programme have been absolutely magnificent thank you to everyone uh, for um, the compliments uh, thank you to everyone for the criticism as well you've got to take it on the chin from time to time uh, and thank you to everyone football fans who are decent in their points of view uh, on our YouTube and our Facebook page. We really do um, relish the fact that uh, we've the majority of our followers are football fans. Like, share and follow if you can on Facebook, please, and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. I leave you with uh, Barry Ferguson, uh, still a happy man, going to have a Zoom party for the weekend. A wee smile as ever from Tam McManus. He thought <laughs> I was going to le- he thought I was going to leather some of the more abusive supporters that we have, but I'm going to let them I off. I can't tap. believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let them no, off today. No, no, <laughs> this no, is not the I'm show not, for you. Come on, just you, see it. That's, that's it, Tom. That's the catchphrase. <laughs> we want to try and get rid of the morons. Anyway, from Ruffy, from Tom, from Barry and myself, have a great weekend. Stay safe and stay indoors. Good night. Good night. 
Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.